and online at WLTX.com. J.R. Barry has moved from the studio to our information center. That's where he is standing by with our special guest tonight, Governor Mark Sanford. J.R. All right, Darcy, thank you so very much. And yes, indeed, we are here with Governor Sanford tonight. And, uh, of course, a lot of people still talking about that stimulus money. And, Governor, I know some of that money, not the disputed money, but some of the other money has already made its way into our state today. I think uh, Richard Ekstrom told us that uh, a number of different agencies are already getting some of that money. In fact, um, um, the, the disputed money, I understand, is going to be a few more days, if not weeks, before it gets here, correct? Yeah, it was actually incorporated as a part of the budget and the fiscal year for the state of South Carolina. It doesn't begin until July 1. So that disputed money will really be basically embedded into the budget, which for us begins July 1. I have to ask you, after the state Supreme Court ordered you to uh, take basically and, and, and spend this money the way that lawmakers wanted it to be spent, at any time after that did you think... You know what? I, I've had enough here, and and, and it's not worth it. Uh, I, did you ever contemplate quitting, retiring, stepping down, resigning, doing something like that? Well, no, I didn't. Uh, I've taken my share of hard hits or body blows in the world of politics. It goes to the territory. Uh, and you make your stand for what you believe in. You let the chips fall with the may, and then you move on. Um, I sleep like a baby at night, you know, because, uh, not to get strange on you here, but the parable of the talents is all about we're going to be judged in life based on what we do with what we have, not what we do relative to some other standard or somebody else. And so that means you go out, you swing the bat as hard as you can during the day, and then when the day is over, you know it's really in the hands of forces much larger than you are, and you let the chips fall with the man. We've got a budget year down now, but lawmakers will be coming back in January, and then they'll have to start work on another budget. You will be the governor when they start work on that. How difficult is that going to be for you now, working with lawmakers after going through something like this? Well, we've had our fair share of dust-ups before, and I suspect we'll have more dust-ups still to come. Uh, and that doesn't, though, change the fact that uh, we're wed, and we have to deal with each other each year as best we can based on, uh, again, different influences, different focuses, uh, different priorities. But it but doesn't change the fact that we'll present our budget, say, hey, here's where we're coming from, and I suspect they'll do the same. All right, we've got a number of viewer uh, emails, and I'm going to read a couple of them here. Uh, this one came in today saying, I applaud you on the stance you took regarding the money. Uh, the question, though, since our state has received this money, will there be full disclosure to the public on how the federal money will be spent? Yeah, um, part of the federal statute basically dictated that each state would have some sort of fiduciary who watched out how that money was dispersed. We chose Richard Ekstrom, who's the Comptroller General of the state, and um, he's going to actually put it onto a web page. And so I, I don't know the exact web address, but if one looks up the Comptroller General, you can find that web address that is going to uh, basically in transparent form list all the expenses that came on, on the federal side, where the money spent, to the degree it's been spent, and how much money is left over. All right. Another viewer says, uh, basically, with all that said, what you just said, do you feel that your message about paying down the debt perhaps was not marketed well and perhaps misunderstood by some of the uh, people out there in the state? You know, certainly. I mean, you're never going to get a perfect message across. Uh, well, you might, but, but <laughs> the rest of us as mere mortals won't. Um, you try as best you can. And uh, is there a lot of noise in the system? Certainly. And so, you know, there are a lot of things that confuse folks. I mean, you've got to remember that when we originally put in for the first waiver, before we even got a response in the White House, the Democratic National Committee had begun running ads. Uh, that basically said, hey, uh, if you don't spend all this money, you don't love South Carolina or it'll go to other states, a variety of other things. That was followed up by the so-called chaos budget that Senator Leatherman created, which was designed to scare the bejesus out of a bunch of school teachers and other state workers. It effectively did that. Then that was followed up by some amorphous group. We still don't know who funded it, how it got funded, but they ran ads, more than $250,000 worth of ads across the state. So when you're going against that kind of firepower, is there going to be some level of confusion? Certainly. But, you know, we laid out as best we could where we're coming from, and it's our hope that most people understood at a concrete level what the debate was about, which was about not digging ourselves a billion-dollar financial hole. It was about making reforms so that we could actually take money in less efficient areas of government and apply them to areas of need. And, and finally, it was about moving away from being number four in the country on per capita indebtedness to a better spot. We've got so many emails and so many questions and trying to lump 
them all together here. One uh, viewer emailed uh, about attracting more businesses to the state and basically wanting to know when the jobs that the federal stimulus money is supposed to create are actually going to be coming to South Carolina, which, by the way, I think we have, what, the third highest unemployment rate in the country right now? It's more complex than that, uh, simply because we also have the, the ninth fastest labor force growth in the United States of America. Uh, and we have the 15th fastest employment growth in the United States of America. So one of the ways that you can lower your unemployment uh, is by people loading up the U-Haul, leaving the state in the upper northeast or upper midwest, heading to a state like South Carolina, and that bumps up our unemployment number in a temporary sense. But in the long run, we're going to be wealthier for those people who choose to make South Carolina home. But that's a longer story. As to what can be done with it or what's going to happen with the federal dollars and jobs, my bet is many of those jobs will not materialize which is why I uh, vociferously oppose the stimulus package. It will help on the public sector side, but in terms of private sector uh, jobs, I think that a lot of those jobs will prove to be phantom jobs and not materialize. How long do you think it's going to take, though, uh, and, and this is just going on a national scale, how long do you think it's going to take before the president's stimulus plan actually works, if you believe it can work? Well, they're already backtracking on the numbers right now. I mean, it, what's been interesting is the erosion with regard to where the federal government has come, where the Obama administration has come, from what they originally projected to what they're now projecting, to, to, to even what he said just the other day, which is the, quote, deficit keeps them up at night. Fifty cents of every dollar that's being spent at the federal government level this year is being borrowed. And that gets to be a very, very scary spot. So. I think that there's a fair bit of backtracking on the number of jobs, quote, created or saved. Uh, already, if you look at last month's job numbers, there were about a plus of, of 100,000, quote, jobs saved or, or, or protected as a result of stimulus, but 300,000 jobs across the country lost. Last day or so, uh, they came back yesterday, overrode a number of your vetoes. Someone emailing a question, Ann Smith sent us this, if gambling machines can be voted away, then why can't payday loans be illegal? Your thoughts on payday lenders in our state? Again, more than a 15-second answer, uh, worth a long conversation. Uh, ultimately, what, that's what that legislation did, uh, was a step toward that. It regulated them. Uh, I opposed it simply because it's, it, you know, I think you can always tell a lot about a bill by who's supporting it. In this case, the payday lending industry hired a bevy of lobbyists, more than about 40, to descend on the Capitol to argue for the regulation. Uh, and so I, I had uh, gone against it for that reason. I, I think that there's some civil liberty questions when you begin to talk about a government house database or a uh, sanctioned database that uh, basically would track uh, consumer behavior. And I also think, just from the standpoint of sure liberty, in a free and open society, people ought to be able to make uh, both wise and stupid decisions. And while it might be a stupid decision to sign up for that kind of loan, if it's transparent, it ought to be their choice rather than one dictated by government, is my opinion. All right. And, of course, we've got numerous emails asking about your political future. A number of people, and you've heard this off and on since this whole federal stimulus money uh, debate started, a lot of people think that, oh, he's grandstanding. He's, he's going to run for president in 2012. What I've consistently said is that is not my plan, that is not my aim. My aim is to go back to the coast of South Carolina, hang out on the weekends down at the farm, uh, hopefully make a good living, and try and replenish the bank account. Uh, that, that's my aim. All I've also said, which has caused some of this fuel to go, is I'll acknowledge that you never know where life goes. My dad died of Lou Gehrig's disease when I was in high school. What it, 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 excuse me, in college, got sick when, he was in high, when I was in high school. What it vividly hit home was the day you got is the day you got. You should do the best you can by the day you have, and then doors are going to open and doors are going to close in life. And all I, I've honestly said is I don't know what comes with regard to doors opening and doors closing, but I can tell you in, in terms of what my aim is, it's to go back to the coast. A good aim, however, uh, not set in stone, correct? Anybody who thinks they can set their life in stone is mistaken about right. life, has been my experience. All right, we are out of time, Governor. Thank Pleasure. you so much for your time you. tonight. Yes, sir. All right, Darcy, we're going to send things back to you on our studios. All right.